use the H2. But the University College Hospital Ibadan has taken the lead as, uh, at all times. And ever since, we have kept an eye on the lookout for Ebola. And uh, so it didn't come to us as a surprise because the component of it was after we suspect these patients, we take blood samples from an isolation unit that we're building uh, in the hospital. As I speak, the isolation building is almost 89% or 90% completed. Uh, we can take samples of patients and send to the virology department. Uh, Professor Daibo has made available to us information that she can you know, comfortably run 100 samples at the moment. Uh, using both the polymerase chain reaction technique or the ELISA technique to identify the viruses. So as far as we're concerned in usage, we had uh, been prepared you know, for outbreaks as far back as 2011, but as regards hemorrhagic fever, of which Lassa is just one of them, we've been prepared for this since April 2014. Uh, Lassa fever patients, we managed to treat them, uh, but we think with the system that we put in place, we can handle and curtail the Ebola viruses as well. Are you sure your staff will be safe? Well, that is one aspect of uh, life that we must all come to terms with. The data that was presented by Professor Oni, who is the chairman of this uh, emergency response team, um, he was able to show that in fact the percentage of uh, case fatality rate, that is people that died of infection, from both patients and the hospital workers was the same percentage, meaning there is a very high risk of our, you know, of our staff being infected. And to curtail this, what we've done is to uh, uh, commence what I'll call uh, continued medical education, uh, which started uh, over a week ago. We started from the entry points of the hospital, we started from the emergency department, went to the general outpatient department, went to the general emergency department. We're now going to the surgical outpatient and medical outpatient department. Apart from putting flexes there where you can read the symptomatology, we're also educating our staff on what to do. Now, every patient is seen as a potential source or a potential Ebola virus patient. And so the issue of universal precaution has become uh, mandatory uh, until such times that the patient is proven not to have it. We want to assume that every patient that comes through the door, no matter what complaints they come with, is a potential Ebola you know, uh, patient. Do you have equipment to detect them? At the moment, we have uh, over 100 PPE kits. That's a universal you know, uh, uh, personal protection equipment. Uh, that's standardized by the WHO. We have over a hundred of those ones for patients that have uh, that qualify for category A. Category A are those with a very high index of suspicion. They have fever uh, over 38, 39 degrees for over you know one or two weeks. There's no response to anti-malaria. They have sore throat. They have body weakness, uterine chest pain. They have diarrhea. They may have bleeding. Those high index of suspicion are category A patients or, or clients. Those ones you have to wear a full PPE. But for those who are not category A, as mean category C uh, or part B, we still go ahead and do universal precaution, double glove, we wear um, surgical, surgeon outfits, disposable surgeon outfits with, with aprons to try and protect us. Um, and once we commence uh, this part of you know, approaches, uh, we will be safe. Uh, I believe we will. So for the high you know, category A, we have over 100 PPE kits. We've spoken to the Federal Ministry of Health and we hope to get more. But for the non-category A, we have over 500 kits that we've already prepared ourselves, packed ourselves. We are ready to uh, handle patients of all you know, uh, types. And I believe that uh, our staff are educated enough today at this ground run. But there's no reason to be afraid or run away from patients. What you need to do is to ensure that you are well kitted uh, in, as in uh, attending to patients. Most importantly, we have instructed since 2011 that our staff in these entry points into the hospital must not wear loose outfits. Okay, they don't wear what coats that is loose, they wear what you call a scrub. Uh, these are things you take off before you leave the hospital. And if you think that you know you have a risk, you can take them off completely and they can be incinerated. Instead of wearing your normal you know, uh, street clothes and take them home when you, 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 there's a risk of spreading the infection to your family. And so I think the staff are now well aware that all the cries of management that people should wear scrubs, which I bought for the staff free of charge in 2011. The scrubs, are they the same as the hand sanitizers that your school is providing? No, when we use the word scrub, it's, a, it's, um, it's like Buba and Shoro. Uh, they are outfits that you wear. They have come in different colors, different designs that you wear instead of your normal clothes. But again, the hospital procured 4,000 
uh, and four hand sanitizers. And this will be distributed to every caregiver who comes in direct contact with patients. Of course, as it is, everything that we've done, construction of the uh, Ebola, you know, boots, the, uh, uh, the toilet for them, you know, uh, the PPE, the uh, universal precaution equipment, everything has been procured and bond by the University College Hospital, which is a federal institution. But 90% of the people we serve are from Oyo State.